one hour. All right. We'll bless our pastors. All right, let's get this going. Pastors, again, it's great Linda, to be with you. How the Holy Spirit leads you? Yeah. Okay, I will take this and then um, we'll just uh, we'll keep a cue on ourselves. We know we're coming up to the hour mark because we know that you are all very, very busy as far as dealing with your ministries and your churches all over the place. So let's get right into the word here. Pastors, again, it's great to be with you. And I hope that what we do today can stir you and encourage you in your ministry. Pastors, we need to walk in the authority of the Word of God. That's why I have titled this From Authority to Ministry, uh, to be able to move the hand of God. Because in order for us to see the breakthrough and the successes or the victories in your ministry and in our lives, yes. and we need to have an authority. We need to know the cost right. of our election as pastors. Because even though we are individuals, we always must recognize the hand of anointing, the uniqueness that the Holy Spirit is going to work in every one of our lives, our position in Christ, our standing in Christ, the anointings and the callings, so we recognize the authority and that we have the right to use it. And the more that we deal with different oppositions in the nations of the world, the more we need to press in and covet earnestly the authorities and the anointing that God has given us. So I want to start first in the book of Exodus chapter 3, the simple rod of Moses, the, the beginning place of where he had to make a decision because of the call of God. This is the most important element. What God calls for, he's going to anoint. And when he's put a demand on you and on your ministry for yourself, then he's going to have to give an anointing to you. If there's not an anointing, then you cannot carry it. So you have the right to expect that what Amen. God sets Amen. in you, the zeal of God in you, the fire of God in you, God has got to give you a rod of authority. Now, in the book of Exodus, the Bible tells us just how God called Moses, how he put a demand on Moses, and then Moses had to come back and he had to ask the Lord, if you're going to have me do all these things, you're going to have me move a nation, whatever you have me to do, which he, which he called them at the burning bush. So there was a uniqueness to every one of you. You should know the moment in which God began to stir your heart. God began to stir your heart. God's going to do something in the spirit. So, so there's got to be an understanding. They have to move their phone. Yeah, someone's got a phone on. Um, listen, so when God calls you, He's going to have to give you something. So, so, so Moses, the very first thing Moses had to grab is, is, is for him, it was the beginning of understanding the authority of God. And here Moses is getting ready to go forward. And he says, Lord, what do you have? And the Lord says, well, what do you have? And God took the simple staff, the simple rod of Moses, and gave it tremendous authority by faith in Moses using what God had given him. So every one of you have to recognize that, that the ministry God has handed to you, there has to be an authority connected to you, something that God will anoint and use. And let's understand this. You know, the, the rod carried great authority, and Pharaoh would have a great rod of authority. But isn't it amazing that Moses' simple staff, his stick, carried more authority than all of Egypt? What he possessed under the anointing that he had in that simple rod carried more authority than Pharaoh himself. So recognize in your ministry the authority God has given you is greater than all things that are around you. It has to be. He's got to be able to consume the other principalities and powers. So when you're up against witchcraft and all the things that you're up against, we got to recognize, recognize that the rod of authority is something that you possess. Now, in this, Moses at the Red Sea, even though he used the rod throughout all of the times of Egypt, he used it for every plague, everything. Listen, God always, we have to trust God to always demonstrate himself constantly. The authority you have is greater than the spirit of the day, is greater than Amen. all the demonic things you're up against, all the spirit of other religions. That's what makes us unique, is that we have a greater authority, therefore, we must expect God to use that authority and we must allow him to move it through us because that is where you get into your spiritual warfare. You are carrying an authority greater than the things that are opposing you and that's how you begin to engage your battle. Now, uh, now Exodus, chapter, uh, Exodus chapter 14, 
as Moses has gained the right to use the authority, as they stood up against the Red Sea, and they're up against the great opposition, and Moses begins to tell the people, I know that the God who brought us out is a God that will bring us through. So we always have to understand that. God who started your ministry is a God that's going to fulfill your ministry. And when you stand up against opposition, it's the same God that's got to bring you through in your ministry. So Moses in chapter 14 begins to tell the people, do not be afraid, stand still. God is going to do something mighty for our deliverance. Now it's amazing where sometimes we will pray, God liberate us, God set us free, God give us the breakthrough. And we know that God will and that he wants to. And here Moses is telling the people that God's going to do this. And then you know that Moses had to have turned to God and say, okay, God, I've told them what you're going to do. Now you tell me how you're going to do it. And God simply says to Moses, don't ask me. I've already given you. Use the authority I placed in your hand. Stretch out your authority against the opposition, against the Red Sea, and part it. It's amazing that when we grasp what God has for us, and we begin to stir that thing by faith inside of our spirit, we're going to watch that God is going to use the authority of the anointing. Somebody say anointing. The anointing on your anointing. ministry, what God has handed to you is a rod of authority. And you must understand the Holy Spirit is giving you a unique impartation of himself and of the message and the ministry of Jesus Christ. And you are growing in that. You are strengthening in that. You are developing in that. Moses didn't have any law. He had no other standard than just the word of God in order to use the authority. And he used that rod throughout his entire ministry because that was the foundation, what he possessed, everything God told him to do. He used that rod. He used that rod. He used the authority. That was the constant demonstration of God's power in him. Notice, it wasn't the stick. It was the exercising of faith of using what he had, made that a tremendous weapon of warfare. Now, in Joshua chapter 1, we move to a level that every one of us have to receive, and that is the mantle of God on your life has come from your predecessors. Somewhere there was a, there was a beginning, and now God is using you. He's going to put the increase of the authority in your life because to win your nation or to win your city, or your country, however you are warring as a pastor, recognize God has transferred a mantle somewhere into your life. But with that mantle, it's a brand new day for you. God's not speaking about the old things, though you remember who did what, but now he wants to transfer the mantle of authority into your hand and make it now a whole new day for you. What God is speaking into your city, what God is speaking into your type of ministry. Somebody has carried some part of it prior, but now that one has ceased, and God is now taking that calling of ministry. He's going to place it on you, and then it's going to be unique because now it's going to become your ministry in Joshua chapter 1. God tells the, the, God tells the young warrior, Moses, my servant, is now dead. But you mm -hmm. cross over this Jordan. You now are going to take this people. You are going to move them into the next place. And the interesting thing was, is that now Moses' rod connected to, connected to the Passover brought them out. But now Joshua, with the word and all of the covenants, can bring them in. The blood of Jesus and the salvation of grace has brought people out of the kingdom of darkness. But now with the word and the covenants and, every, and the knowledge of what God has done is what brings you with the authority in. So you are bringing your people in. Not only have they been brought out, but you now by the authority of God are going to bring them into the kingdom of God transforming their lives. And here, Joshua had to get this revelation. God said, as I was with Moses in his season, so shall I now be with you in your season. And I'm going to bring them in through your ministry. That means by, that my Joshua is going to learn by obedience and by confession 
God is going to move in the authority of the anointing that Moses had on a staff is now going to be out of the heart and out of the mouth of Joshua. It's growing to the place of our confession, growing to the place of our obedience. When, when God says, I want you to step somewhere, you're going to step there with expectation. God told Joshua, here is the parameters, and he showed them the size of the scope of what they were about to inherit. He tells them, if you stand strong in every covenant, in all the words, and you meditate them and mutter them with your mouth, you constantly speak them, then you will make your way prosperous. Then you mm -hmm. will have good success because now the word and the authority is in Joshua. So when God says, here's what you're going to do, Joshua is now going, Joshua isn't carrying a staff and a rod per se. He's now carrying the authority on the inside. No. Now he's got the word of authority so that in chapter three of Joshua, chapter one, or the book of Joshua, as Joshua knows what he possesses, Joshua is now going to face the Jordan as Moses faced the Red Sea. Joshua is now going to follow the covenant and the promise of God. And he is now going to declare when the priesthood touches the waters of the Jordan with the covenant or the word or the authority of God, God is going to part the Jordan and we are going to go through to the beginning of the adventure of grabbing hold of the covenant promise of God. The authority now is in Joshua's speech. In now his obedience. Now he's gained everything from what Moses had done. He had the history of how he operated. The transition of the authority, the mantle of God that was on Moses is now on Joshua. So you have a Amen. greater anointing than your predecessors. You have the right to a greater authority than those that came before you. You are moving the people of God. Even as you pioneer, others have prayed forth for you to get to this place. And you are now going to carry this mantle into the next dimension. So here's what Joshua does. So as he stands his ground in obedience, we watch the Jordan River part. And then when you go over the chapter 6 very quickly, now he uses the speech of the spoken word because now that he has come in, the authority is something you use with your speech pastors. We speak the word of God. We declare now with the authority that brought you in, the mantle which is on your life. Now, as Joshua faces the city of, as he faces the city of Jericho, it's not by might, nor is it by power, but it's by the spirit of God and at the right moment, when faith is at the right place, notice what he did. He circled that city with the nation of Israel until all the warriors carried the faith that, that was in Joshua. So at the right time, at the right moment, think about this. No matter what you're up against right now, Pastor, you keep circling it with the authority of the word of God. You circle it and you circle it. You surround it with the word of God. And at the right moment, when God says, now I want you to release my word, the authority, that which has been given to you, that's what's been, that's the mantle set on you. Then when you begin to release that word with the faith of God, which is on the inside of you, now you begin to watch the oppositions begin to crumble. So often, and I know we do it as Christians, we want to just shout things out of the way. But we're shouting with just our mouth and our flesh. We're not shouting with the authority of God's word. We need to wait on that word. We know what's coming. Why? Because God's put a mantle on you because he has a calling for your life. The mantle in Moses' hand or the rod in his hand was to bring them out. The authority now on Joshua is to bring them in. So you carry the same mantle that when you begin to speak the word of God, the shout of your victory is going to bring the walls down. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 and 17, we now add with the rod of authority and the voice and the understanding of obedience, Let's add the anointing of the Holy Spirit that brings the authority and brings the confession, brings it all to power. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 and 17, we see a young man named David, and he's being called as his predecessor Saul was. We now begin to see the anointing 
or the Spirit of God and power begin to come on the individual. And what happens, Pastor, is under that anointing, there is a transformation of who you are from a civilian to a ministry gift. The anointing changes your status. David was just a shepherd. Saul was just someone who followed his dad and handled flock. But the anointing transformed them from who they were into the kings they were called to be. So when God has put the call on your life and he wants to give the authority to your life, you have the right to trust that the anointing of God that's going to come on your life by the Holy Spirit is going to elevate you into a, into a new dimension. And that dimension, Pastor, is governmental authority. You have to know that as a leader in your ministry, you carry a governmental transformation. The Holy Spirit that is on you is on you to transform your inner being according to the level of that anointing and calling so that you now are moved up into a position of a relationship with the Holy Spirit because now you carry a governmental anointing over the house, over the ministry. That's what makes you different and unique. You are much more accountable to that anointing, but that is something you have the right and you must, you must, pastors, in order to win, you must receive that God has put that on you He's put that anointing and that calling on you. So David received that. And that mantle of anointing put a king's heart on the inside. On the inside with that king's heart, David had full knowledge of the covenants and the promises and the direction the nation of Israel was supposed to take. That was on the inside of the young warrior. And that mantle of authority and power allowed him to demonstrate even behind the scenes, what God was going to do. So when he faced Goliath, he didn't face it just as a young man. He faced it as a king on the inside with the mantle of authority, the rod of authority, the word of God in his spirit. So when he faced Goliath, he had a face, he was able to face it with the confidence that he said, you may come against me with your sword and your spear and your shield or your javelin and all the weapons you have, but I now come. And pastor, think about this. When you stand against the powers of darkness, you can say, you can come at me with all the lying spirits and all the witchcraft that you have, but I come to you under the mantle and the authority of the Holy Spirit, the God whom I serve. And I know my God has called me to expand and to increase Man. and to bring his kingdom. And in so doing, devil, you are defeated. And I hey, drive I after you with the ministry authority that I possess and I use it. See, David Jesus. didn't have to ask God to use it. The anointing was already on him to use it. Moses said, right. God, what do I do? And God said, I've already given it to you. You need to use the mantle. So now we step into the authority and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's move this to Jesus and his life and his ministry. Let's first go to Romans chapter 1. And let's look at something because now we have these. And listen, pastors, and I know that even as I'm speaking, you can be thinking of all the different kings and those that came <laughs> under the anointing, those that came under the glory of God. So we have a history and we have a, we have a, we have a cloud of witnesses of all of those in the Old Testament who we saw the anointing, we saw the mantle, we saw the calling, we saw the victories. That's why we read the word. Let's always read our word and find the power side in it. Amen. Because of what you are all up against, what we're up against now in this season, yeah. we need the power side. The difference between us and the world is the relationship and the power of God. Satan's kingdom carries power, but the kingdom of God we're about carries greater power. And we are here to get in the devil's face, which is what some of you are doing right now. And you need that mantle of God to make a distinction between you and the religious systems that are surrounding you. There must be a distinction at all times. This in Romans chapter Man. one, the Bible tells us it tells us about Jesus, and it says Paul called to be an apostle, or Paul a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated into the gospel of God 
which he promised beforehand through the prophets and the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and was declared, the Son of God was declared to be the Son of God with power. The distinction of the revelation of the Father that was on the Son was the power of God on him that demonstrated the Father and demonstrated the Father's kingdom. We people so often want to make Jesus down to some emaciated Monty Miltos is what we'll call it America. But he is a king and he came to demonstrate the kingdom of his father and the unique difference between him and everything else was the power of God to prove who he was, how he stood, and how he operated. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6 and verse 10, Jesus tells his disciples, here's how you are to pray. And he tells them, you are to pray, come to your kingdom, Father, be done your will. Now, the only way for this to happen is just like when we had Moses and we had Joshua and we had David, we have all the others that wore forward. Now we need the demonstration of the kingdom of God in order to advance. So, so here Jesus came with demonstration, or at least it said with demonstration and with power, and we're about to see how he did this, but he came to demonstrate as the son of God, okay, as the son of God, he came to demonstrate the kingdom of his power. That was the whole thing. And in the resurrection power that proved the demonstration when God raised him from the dead, he showed openly the demonstration of the kingdom power that he was about. And then in Matthew's gospel, chapter 6, we have Jesus telling his disciples what they are to pray for. Yes, we want to minister to the needs of people. We are ministering always. But we need the government of God in our midst that means we need the authority of God. We need the parameters of his kingdom. We need his operation. We need his kingship in our ministries. You need a supernatural ministry, which is full of the demonstration of the government. Somebody say government. So you carry a government yeah. mantle. So you need to let the government of God. So he wants the government of heaven operating in your life. And then with the government, comes the will of God on what direction you aim the rod of your authority, on where you speak against what high wall stands in your way, how you confront principalities and powers, because you, as a child of God, as a pastor, recognizes the governmental anointing that you have every right to ask the Holy Spirit to place on you in order for you to be in the position you are called to be in. There must be a measure of the government of God operating in you, and you have every right to stir that in you. The devil will tell you you don't have it. He'll tell you you're just a human. You have nothing, but no. God has anointed you as a human with a governmental mandate. That's why he tells you, if you're going to ask the kingdom, ask for the kingdom of God, Ask for the will of God. Ask for the whole thing. Jesus came with this level. He was declared to be who he is. So if he's declared to be who he is with the power of God, that means you and I, pastors, the ministry that we carry, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, must also be one that is declared because of the power of God. If you go to Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, Jesus shows us and he ministers in the parameter of the anointing that was on his life. Now listen, what's on Jesus belongs to the church, right? What was on Jesus? Jesus is about to demonstrate, he is showing us, the Bible says this is that he came with power. Jesus says, ask for the kingdom and the will of God. And then for all of us, he shows how he walked. Remember, Jesus is now walking by the full leading of the Holy Spirit. And according to the Romans, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and I, then there is quickening, life-transforming authority that is in you as a pastor, as a leader. There is a transformating authority inside your life. Now, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus shows us the parameters 
of the Holy Spirit that's operating in his life. He says in verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay? There is a purpose to this mantle of the authority of God to demonstrate and act your ministry and to move the hand of God. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's anointing has a parameter. And it says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because, notice, he's on you because the Holy Spirit, and you all know this, is an action God. He is God in action in your life. And the Holy Spirit and the mantle of God comes on you. It's because God wants to demonstrate and do action through you. Remember, kingdom of God in, the will of God to be declared. And now we got to act on this, just as Moses did with the rod. God said, do it. Because he has anointed me to proclaim the gospel to every broken city, home, doesn't matter, to the poor. Who's going to bring the breakthrough to your city? Who's going to bring the provision of God to those that are around you? How is God going to sovereignly and supernaturally meet the need of the destitute and broken? So there's got to be something in the kingdom of God that you can trust that God will, despite no matter what's happening, God can and will provide for every need, the brokenness of heart, the brokenness of home, those that are destitute in provision. You have the right because of this to say, God, your good news, your anointing has to open a door and provide the provision that no matter what, food will be on the tables of our people. They will not be in lack. There's got to be an anointing of provision to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed. The ministry you have is to shatter every chain, every yoke, heal, provide, and then to proclaim the season of God's kingdom. Pastors, you are not beggars in the kingdom of God. You're not beggarly. Your, 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 your parishioners are not. None of us are. We have been elevated to a status and we're about to see that. Jesus gave them the parameters, and he showed them this is the dimension of how the Holy Spirit wants to work, how he worked in his life. He's explaining this. And then if you go to, if you go to, if you go to John chapter 5, here's what Jesus tells us, and I want us to get this, how he worked. If we have authority, and we're... And now we have the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus walked in the Holy Spirit, demonstrated the Holy Spirit. Now he's going to tell us how he operated in the Holy Spirit. So you and I are, are operating in a now moment. Everything about God is God is a today God. Today. And if God takes care of your today, that means he can take care of your tomorrow. Every day with God is full of his demonstration. In John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 17. Jesus now shows us in the authority how he operated. And let's understand something. Jesus is speaking to his disciples because he is training them. He's preparing them. People think Jesus alone walked in all of this and we are on our own. Everything Jesus did was to show us and to teach us and prepare us for how you and I are to walk as he walked. Remember, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a demonstration and a revelation of the ministry and who Jesus Christ is. So there's got to be an action and power in your ministry that demonstrates the mantle of authority which is on your life. Jesus said, verse 17, my father has been working until now. And because my father is working, I have been working. So let's grasp this. For your ministry, for your house, for your life, for your community, God is working. There is a vision out of heaven where the Father is always wanting to move forward. And what he wants you to do is see what he sees. Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, knows what the Father is doing. So you and I, by the Spirit of God, listen, this is a serious relationship with the anointing of God on your life. Pastor, it's personal. It's intimate. It's the Holy Spirit in the mantle that's on you, showing you what heaven is doing on your behalf and what heaven wants to accomplish 
through you. There is this realm in the prophetic pastors where if you put your spirit man into the prophetic nature of God, you will see the flow of God, what God is saying, what God is doing, how God is operating. And when you get up into that flow, the connection for you is how God wants to operate in and through you as he is operating. He wants you to operate in that flow. Jesus is saying, I didn't do anything just of my own with the mantle of God. I was always seeing and listening to my father so I could operate in the mantle of God. And my father's been working till now and I have been working, verse 19. Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. So here, let's recognize, Jesus limited himself to the full authority of the Holy Spirit and it's the revelation of his father to his life because he came as a demonstrator. He was going to open the door. He was going to be the son of God. But he's about to transform you and I to a position that we have the right to exercise positions in his kingdom. So Jesus operated without any of his own authority so we could fully demonstrate the authority of the Holy Spirit and the kingdom of his father in the, in the realms of how the spirit of God ministered. So surely I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. What he sees the father do, this is John's gospel, chapter five, verse 19. Whatever he sees the father do, he does in like manner. Verse 20, for the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself is doing. Now we're gonna find out that Jesus said that's the will of heaven, is to show you and I. That's where our peace comes from. We have revelation knowledge, pastor how God is going to survive, how God's going to provide for, how God's somewhere in his word, God's going to show you things to come because that's in the word to do. So here he says, the father shows him everything. That's why the church is not ignorant. That's why there's something that you and I have that the world does not possess. You have an unction in the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is always showing you, unctioning you, and nudging you of what the Father is doing, what the Father wants to do, what is happening in the spirit realm. That's why you and I must be so connected to the mantle of authority so we can listen to what God is saying because he wants you to know. Pastor, in the darkest hour, he wants you to know. He does not want to leave you in a place of darkness. He wants you to know exactly what he's doing. So he says he shows him all things that he does, and he will show him even greater things than these so that you may marvel. The ministry of Jesus is not in the past as a history book. It is in the present in you now. The ministry of Jesus is to be present in you now. You need to take that in the, in the inside. Holy Spirit, you've got greater things. There are greater things coming. There is otherwise, how can we win? There must be a greater kingdom always operating against the kingdom of darkness. And pastors, that's what you're operating in. You are operating in the greater kingdom. And we have yet to see through our generation the things that God has yet to do. So what Jesus was saying, even as he says now, there's even greater things coming because he has given the authority even over life and death. He's given him power and provision. So Jesus is going to show him all, the Father is going to show him all things. That's why you and I are never to be left in the dark. Ephesians chapter three says that the purpose of the church is to be the revealer of the kingdom of God and of the victory that took place at the cross of Calvary, resurrection power, we are to be a sign and a wonder, believers, pastors, to the principalities and powers in the heavenly realm. Listen, the angelic realm has been sent to surround you. The angels of God encamp about the heirs of salvation. They are there as you minister in the kingdom of God. They are awed and amazed to watch God demonstrate through you, through your ministry, through your life. And they're there to cover and protect and guide that mantle that is on your life because you are the vessel of God. Now, in Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, this is where Jesus, where I'm using this scripture, as Jesus now reminding, as he's demonstrating, remember his disciples, are watching and watching and watching. They are operating there. They are seeing the things that, that God is doing. They're watching Jesus do everything that he did. Um, uh, in Matthew 4, Jesus, the Bible says he came out in power. Uh, 
In Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, it says that Jesus came out of the wilderness in power. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, Jesus demonstrated that power and signs and wonders and miracles and healings. Let's always remember those two scriptures, Luke 4 and Matthew 4. Jesus came out of the wilderness in power. In Matthew 4, it shows you how the power activated. Signs, wonders, miracles healed every kind of sickness, every kind of disease, cast out devils left and right. Jesus hit the ground demonstrating the kingdom that he was preaching. So the disciples from the very get-go got to watch the kingdom be seen. And you and I, we get this into this world before the master comes for us, before he takes us home to himself, he's going to demonstrate his kingdom. He's going to demonstrate, I got that. He's going to demonstrate his kingdom through you all the way to the day. He's not coming for a broken down, beaten, emaciated church. He's going to come and gather his own that have been a demonstration of the kingdom into a sin-cursed world. He's going to show himself mighty. Now, in Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, Jesus now begins to give the hint as to what his disciples are going to do. Jesus said, Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, he says in verse 18, he, he speaks about Peter. And he says, Peter, you may be a rock, but on the rock of the confession of faith that you have revealed, on your confession and what the fathers revealed to you, I am going to build my church. Now, Jesus did not build his church while he was here on earth. Jesus is building his church from the right hand of the Father. So he's got to build his church through something or through someone. So he's actually building, he is, he is building with demonstration his church through you. Because he says to the disciples, I am going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. This is exciting, but I'm going to do it through you. So I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. I'm going to give you governmental authority to bind what needs to be bound and to loose what needs to be loosed. So the kingdom of God is going to be advanced. So let's look at this. Jesus wants to build his church. His church is going, to be, is going to come with demonstration because his church has an adversary. He's telling you right off the bat, the kingdom of darkness and all the powers of darkness are going to wage a war against the church he's going to build. But he's already declared that the gates will not prevail because who he is and his kingdom is going to be greater. It's going to be a battle, but the kingdom of righteousness is going to overtake the kingdom of darkness. And he's going to do it through his disciples because he says, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom so that whatever you bind shall be bound, whatever you loose shall be loose. So pastor, in your private time with God, your private time in the Holy Spirit. That's when you need to practice the presence of God and see yourself walking in authority. You need to get that on the inside. You need to see yourself as God wants you to act. You need to see that in your spirit, man. How you are going to address the devil? How are you going to address demonic powers? How are you going to address sickness and disease? You need to stir that on the inside of you, meditating on the word of God and the anointing and the ministry that's in you. So it becomes part of your nature. In John's gospel, chapter one, what we have is this, and this is where I, this is where I like it, because now we're coming into the transfer of authority from Jesus to you, from Jesus to you. You and I now have this transforming, and it's how he's transforming the authority. In John's Gospel, chapter 1, he speaks about the Word of God and the power of the Word of God. He says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus is the Word of God. We understand that. In the beginning with God, Jesus is the full Word of God. Verse 3, everything created... Everything made, everything established came by the declaration of the word of God. So now we've got Jesus. Now we have a revelation of who Jesus is. He is the very word of God. So everything that comes forth from him had creative power everywhere. Jesus spoke out of the heavens as the son of God. He spoke forth and the spirit of God acted on the word and everything came into existence it was a demonstration of kingdom power, so the word carries light and life in it, okay? So now we've got a word with power. Now, but I want you to go down to verse 12. 
So now we've got the authority of the Son of God. Somebody say Son of God. We got the authority as the Son of God. That's who he is. But now he's about to elevate you in a position in his kingdom. And it says in verse 12, but as many as received him, that's you, have he has given the right and the authority to become the children of God. We are now sons and daughters of the king of kings. We are now connected. He has elevated us into his father's kingdom as sons and daughters. And here's why you are a son and a daughter now. Yes. Because a slave or a servant is not an inheritor. A son and a daughter are. You have been elevated. He says to those that believe on his name, he gave the right. He has elevated us to the position of now children of God, sons of God, daughters of God, with the authority to activate and exercise the kingdom of God. It says not only have you become sons of God, has he given you the right, but, but it goes on down and goes on down in verse 16, and he has given you the of, of his grace, of the fullness of what he possesses. Think about this now. Jesus, the word of God, carries all the fullness, everything. And of that fullness in himself, he is now releasing that fullness to you, to you and I. We have the fullness of the Father. Notice, and the fullness, and of his full fullness, we have received grace upon grace. Now I want you to go to Ephesians chapter one. So let's think about something, church. The world wants you to have nothing. The devil wants you to think you have nothing. But you need to recognize this. I have everything. I've got, there was a measure of grace that belongs to me because I have been elevated. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 5, you have been predestined to be adopted as the children of God. Now, I want us to get this. We've been, we've been destined to be adopted as the children of God, which means now I become an inheritor. Somebody say an inheritor. I become an inheritor of God. Yes. Now, I want you to turn your Bible way back in the Old Testament quickly here to 1 Chronicles. And I want you to go to 1 Chronicles chapter 18. And I want you to see something. This is important for us to think of ourselves the way God thinks of us. Jesus carried authority. We, we saw it all through the Old Testament. We've been elevated by the word of God to sons and daughters. We are sons to God. People get offended by that. We are not the son of God, but we've been elevated to be sons of God. I'm a son of God. You're a child of God. You're a daughter of God. You're a son of God. We've been elevated in a position. God has adopted. God made us sons and daughters, right? We've been adopted into a position of being the children of God. This is, this is phenomenal because in order to be effective in his kingdom, we must have positions of authority that he and he alone can give us. Remember, he's made the way. He paid it with his blood. We're going to find he Man. is seated at the right hand of power. And just by himself, that's, now he's elevated us to position of sons of God. Why? Because he wants us to share in his kingdom. Talk Glory. about the most greatest blessing out of all of eternity. God wants us to reign with him. Notice 1 Chronicles chapter 18. And it says in verse 17, it's talking about David reigning on his throne. When David took the throne, in verse 17, it says, and all of his sons, say, I'm a son of God. All of his son sons. Of God. <laughs> oh, listen, I, I like us to do this because we got to say this about ourselves. All of his sons became chief ministers at the king's side. All of his sons became chief ministers at the king's side. And because the sons became chief ministers, what did they do? What did they have? They had a measure of authority, didn't they? Every one of them had to represent the king in the position they were given. That means they had to have the authority of their father so they could act on his behalf so there had to be authority in their lives in order to do so. So every, every position they had, David didn't do it all. He gave some of the authority to his sons, put them in positions to, 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 to demonstrate his kingdom and to act on his behalf. And they helped expand his kingdom because it carried a weight of authority. Now go back to Ephesians in your Bible. 
And let's look at Ephesians chapter 19 and 20. I want, you to, I want us to grasp something as I bring it down here. Ephesians 19 and 20. And it says something here. It says in 19, and we have to know what, he, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, gave him a position far above every principality, far above every power, every might, every dominion, every name that could ever have been named, not only in this age, but in all the ages to come. And verse 22, and he has put everything under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the best interests of the church. He gave him a position with tremendous power. Now, now look at Ephesians chapter 2 in verse 6. And he raised us up together and has seated us together in the heavenly realms. Notice, and he seated us together in the heavenly realms positioned in Christ Jesus. So now let's look at something here. Jesus is seated in the heavenly realms. We now, as sons and daughters of God, have been positioned in him. Jesus is the head over all things to his church. We are now in Christ. So being in him, hidden in him, his authority and his dominion and his kingdom is being acted through us, through you, because you are positioned in his authority. Now, why don't you go to John's Gospel, chapter 14. You are in him. That's where he has positioned us. We can never leave that place. Standing in the name of Jesus, you are standing in all that he is. You are positioned. That's, why, that's what we say, in the name of Jesus. Think about it. You are positioned in him. All of his glory is around you. You are hidden with him. You are in there, and he is working his kingdom, and you are in him. So he's working his kingdom and his dominion through you. Paul was a servant, yet, yet, yet he was called to be. He carried a mandate. So we as servants of God, as sons of God, he, we are positioned in him. So his kingdom has got to work through you. You are representing the master and the anointing and the authority in your life and on your life is going to demonstrate everything he is, John's Gospel, chapter 14. And here's what Jesus says to us, and we need to grasp it. It's for his church, and you are his church. You represent the body of Christ. You represent the master, and you and I must carry that. He said this, and this is, this is, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is John's Gospel, chapter 14, and verse 10. He said, do not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Do you not believe? Well, the works... The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Let's go on to verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and even greater works than these, because I go to my Father. Greater works. Jesus did by the authority of the Holy Spirit, under the, uh, under the obedience to his father, has now been placed in the position, according to Matthew's gospel, of all authority and all power. And he is now telling his disciples, everything is about to change. Because when I go to my father, I'm going to carry all authority and all power. I'm going to position you in me. And in me, I'm going to give you authority. I'm going to move through you with the now authority of my purchased position because of the blood that he has shed, of the dominion that he now carries, above every principality and power, now that he has won that battle, he has won the war, he is now, he is now demonstrating the victory of that war, of the victory of that battle. He's demonstrating it through you and I. So he says, you're going to see greater things, and whatever then you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, it shall be accomplished. John's Gospel, chapter 15, tells you how. You remain in me, and I remain in you. Think about this. Our King, our Lord, the, the Son of God, is seated right now at the right hand of power. 
and he is demonstrating his kingdom through you because you are seated in him. You are vital in the kingdom of God, pastors. You are vital to be positioned in him. The angels of God are encamped around the mantle and the anointing on your life. You are now a son of God. They will only be servants all of their eternal existence, but you have been elevated. You are priceless in the heart of God. You've been redeemed by his blood. You carry the weight of the faith of the master. You are very precious. You are deeply beloved, and now you are positioned, and as long as in John's gospel, we stay, we stay stay in him and he in us, he will constantly demonstrate the kingdom of God through your life and you will bear much fruit. Ephesians chapter four, and this is how I'm going to bring this thing down. I appreciate being on the air with you. I know we're coming down closely here. Ephesians chapter four, and we must grab this. Ephesians chapter four, so you must take this to heart. You are positioned. You must get that. The world around you wants to pull you down. The devil wants to wrestle that out of you. That's the biggest thing. The devil will wrestle from you, your position. He wants to make you think you can't do it. You're a failure. You're all alone. You are not. The heaven is guarding the mantle that's in your life, guarding the authority that's in your life. Guarding the presence of God as you move in this, they are warring against things because you are vital to the kingdom. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. This is what he gave, and you are some of that. Listen, you are called. Jesus told the disciples, you didn't choose me, I chose you. You have to say to yourself, I've been chosen by God. Father, thank you. You chose me from my mother's womb. You. you chose me. You chose me. Hallelujah. And if you chose me, therefore, you're going to anoint me. If you're going to anoint me, you're going to empower me. You're going to use me. you got right. kingdom. You chose me. Hallelujah. You have every right Hallelujah. to say that with a confidence. God chose me just because he could have chosen anybody else. But the fact that he chose me, hallelujah, Lord, I'm going to run with it. So it says, and he Amen. gave some the apostles and prophets and evangelists yes, and Lord. pastors and teachers. You are the son. Jesus. That is the, that is the gift. That, that's the minister, five-fold ministry gift you've been given. Yeah. And notice, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, so we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a completed man. You've been given the mandate that Jesus Hallelujah. told his disciples. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom, and you're going to be able to buy, you're going to be able to lose all authority in heaven and earth belongs to me. I have now graced you as a five-fold ministry gift. Here is your calling to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You are driving forward with everything God has given to you. He's handed you in 1 Corinthians the gifts of the Spirit, the ministries of the Holy Spirit, the dimensions of every ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's handed that to you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he's allowed this to be weapons of great power and of great warfare. John's gospel, chapter 16, the spirit of God will take everything that belongs to Jesus and make sure that you have no lack. Mark's gospel, chapter 11, he'll give you the authority to speak to every mountain pastor in your way and command those mountains to crumble and move before you. And in Acts chapter 3, Hallelujah. he's going to ask you to do one thing, demonstrate. And the disciples said in chapter 3, such as we have, we now give to you in the powerful standing in with the mantle of God, with the anointing of God, with the dimensions of the Holy Spirit of God, with the call of God, standing in that beautiful name, we release what we possess in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Pastors, you have been equipped for this walk. You carry the mantle for this hour. You carry the anointing for this hour. Don't Amen. let the devil steal, fr steal it from you. Don't let him lie to you. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, for every one of their churches and the things they're going through, those that are going through the trials of persecution, Holy Spirit, I thank you. You revive them. You say, I've got you, my son. I've got you, my daughter. Jesus. I am yes, covering you. Yes, All of heaven is yes. on your side. And if God before yes. you, nothing can be against you. The greater one is with them. And Father, I speak. Jesus. You stir their ministries. You stir those that are around them. 
Father, I thank you for divine favor in every one of their communities. I drive back the hordes of hell. I thank you, Father, even favor with their governments. Father, you you bring the fear of God in the midst of the camp. They are going to stand up with their heads high because of the blood of Jesus Christ has bought them, paid for them, redeemed them, and now they've been elevated, adopted, transformed, and they carry a mantle. Let them receive it from God with humility, but with great boldness, Father. Use these men and women of God mighty for your radical kingdom yes, sake. And Father, we Amen. give you all the glory. Give you Hallelujah, all the glory. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, listen. Hallelujah. I want you to know that you can always stay connected to us through Facebook, standingintheword.org. That is our website. You can find us on Facebook, Standing in the Word Ministries. You can find our page. You can like our page. Just find us on Facebook, Standing in the Word Ministries. Um, now I know they they already said earlier just where they're all from. So I so so I've got I've got I got Pakistan right. I've got I've got Canada. I've got um, 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 Pastor. Where is everybody from? Pastor um, uh, uh, Pastor Binat, can you tell me briefly what all the countries that people that are watching are from? As you okay, can... so we have from Pakistan, India, Canada, and Uganda. Uh, Kenya. So we have many nations. So we are really glorifying God for this wonderful meeting and wonderful opportunity. And we have Pastor Brian. Let me just check if he's there. <laughs> Pastor Brian from USA. He's our every Monday teacher, our speaker teaching about the family. Pastor Brian, he's a Rema. Pastor Brian, can you just speak about you? Just as, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone here in America. Of course, good evening where you are. Um, I am uh, Pastor Brian Weaver, and I'm out of Los Angeles, California. And uh, I am uh, the founder of Ross, uh, uh, Rama Gospel Mission, which is an international outreach. We promote fellowship in the home and discipleship amongst the people. And so uh, pretty much that that's it. Um, that's yeah, what we do. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Brian. We have, you know, different pastors. Pastor, uh, let me just say, Pastor Paul Belcher from Canada. So he's uh, such a good friend of mine. Sister Girl, we are really good international friends. You know, we really thank you so much for each one and everyone. Any information if you need, I just put here. My email ID is there, website is there, and the contact number, WhatsApp, you can see in the chat. What's the contact number? You know, my name is there. You know, so thank you, Pastor Richard, for your precious time. We are blessed. If anyone has any question, anyone have anything, doubt. <laughs> I think yeah. so. There's no doubt because word of God, there is no doubt. <laughs> but still, if you have something, you can ask. Uh, I myself, hi, Prophetess Winnie here, Pastor Winnie. I had some challenges, and I tell you, when God is ready to use you, when it's going to be a promotion, there, you know, there's always something, but you, you know, God promised you that we rise up from it, no matter the affliction. You know, over the weekend, I was feeling like falling, not falling down, but unbalanced. I think I had an ear infection, that's what it was, but, um, you know, the place was spinning, and I didn't even get to go out to church, but I worship at home. And just what you were preaching about, you know, um, the anointing and when God wants to do something, it's like all of this resonates to, to me, you know, you. Uh, and we, we yeah. wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, right. powers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. We just have to press on knowing that God who call us out of darkness into the marvelous light will bring us through. And I feel, you know, I have a great testimony I'll share later. Uh, of you know uh, some stuff that stressed me out financially or whatever and God just show up praise God he showed up Amen. in my life Amen. so we know we just give him praise and give him the glory and thank you pastor Amen. for so your pastor, yeah. so yes. pastor Bell, uh, Paul Bachelor do you want to say anything <laughs> you know anyone wanted to say this is not just for you know I can tell the name but if you want to say if you're blessed you want to say thank you you're most welcome to say yeah thanks yeah. Anyone else? Please. Pastor, Pastor uh, Giovanetti, uh, that was a very profound teaching. And uh, 
you know, I, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, like she said, but against principalities, powers, dark forces, and heavenly places. But, you know, in the way that it was presented, I've never taken a look at it that, quite that way. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I am blessed to be able to receive that teaching from you. And, Amen. uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so we need very, very, very wonderful. <laughs> Let our Indian pastors, yeah, Brother Paul, please. Yeah, if I could, uh, just a moment. Uh, Pastor Devetti, uh, I was very blessed um, by this message. It's very timely. Um, I'm going through right now a, uh, let's just say I'm been uh, praying against a bunch of, uh, uh, there's uh, communities that uh, have been very oppressed and I've been praying um, against this uh, spiritual oppression that's been covering that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, so yeah, it's just a, a really good uh, timing uh, to be able to hear this and to be uh, to have uh, this uh, you know brought back um, uh, to re you know to re um, to have it to, you know brought back to mind. Um, so I really appreciate that. And uh, if it's okay. Um, I would like to be able to share this message, the recording of it or whatever, uh, to be able to share it with all the pastors throughout Africa and Asia and stuff that I have um, with my ministry, um, to be able to share it with them um, and to have them hear this as well. So, Thank you. Do, you. do you have it on you or do you need us to send something to you? Did you record the message today? I okay. think uh, Pastor Benod, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we also have... you can, yeah, you can just share me the link, okay. you know, the recording, we, when you share the link, I can share it, uh, share in the Facebook, okay, as well great. to the, our Indian pastors as well, okay, that great. link, so they, great. because I think so, everyone are blessed, so anyone, Indian pastor, please come out if you are blessed. I just, uh, with respect to Pastor Paul Belcher's comments, um, I just loved what Pastor Richard said, Pastor Gina Vanetti, that where we minister to the brokenhearted, we have a special mantle, a special anointing of provision. So I just want to thank you as well, Pastor Giovanetti. This is such a rich message. I took four pages of notes. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm just so blessed by this and this network of people. Um, thank you again. It's I, I don't know how regularly we're going to be doing this, or we have been doing this, but uh, I would certainly like to be a part of every meeting. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Uh, Any, anyone wanted from India? <laughs> Pastor, if I could say something else. Yes, in yes, terms, please, in please. terms of the message, I, I really did enjoy the message. It, it reminded me of my younger days in, on the subject of the authority of the believer. And uh, one, one of the things that, uh, that stood out to me about this message was uh, when he, when, when Pastor, you mentioned uh, uh, our uh, positional. And, uh, and, and we understand that everything that's within our redemption is position, but it yeah. takes faith to make it actual uh, progressive. You know, it takes we it takes acting on faith. Everybody in the body of Christ is, is literally standing in the position uh, to experience everything that the pastor was speaking about today. But it's it's faith that brings it into reality. And so I, I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed it immensely, a pastor, and I definitely will follow you. Uh, uh, you are a, a great teacher and uh, you know and a powerful powerful man of God. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Amen. That. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone want from our side? Anyone? Please unmute yourself. The control is in your hand. <laughs> yeah, you can unmute. If you are blessed. Okay, so Pastor Daniel, do you want to say? Pastor Suraj, Pastor Sivlal, Pastor Asip, anyone wanted to share, please? Deepak as well. Sister Girl, thank yes, you so much. Sir. 
good. Very <laughs> blessed to message. I think uh, life change of people. And thank you so much, Pastor Renaud. Pastor, very good, blessed message. And God bless you in all ministry. Man, anyone else, Pastor Suraj, Daniel, Dallas, let us take some little time and just say something to our Pastor Richard. And we'll have more time. I will talk with Pastor Richard. <laughs> you know, Thank you, Pastor Richard. again. Let's see when he is possible when it is possible. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Pastor Richard, for the nice message. God bless you. Thank you. We hope uh, in, uh, in coming days uh, we will listen more messages from you and thank you all pastors who are praying uh, for the ministry and uh, for India and thank you Pastor Binod for adding me. Oh, glory to thank God. Amen. Thank you. Pastor Daniel, I thought you were waiting for something to say. <laughs> we're all good. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, Pastor Richard. I just want to say thank you for this uh, great message and uh, thank you so much for reminding us about our uh, authority in Christ because uh, the identity that you have shared so beautifully and wonderfully it really helped me uh, personally a lot regarding uh, you know that uh, having that understanding and uh, knowledge of that authority that we carry with us as sons and daughter of God it really makes a big difference in our Christian work with God and in our ministries as well. So once again, uh, thank you so much. And uh, I pray that may God continue to use you mightily for the expansion of his kingdom and for his glory. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity. Last chance. Last chance. <laughs> sorry, Pastor right. Daniel, now I stuck with you. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Yeah. We've got things to do. Yeah, yeah, I just want to thank you to Pastor for his really marvelous messages. He said uh, by the power of God, and uh, I'm very blessed by the messages. Even though I joined late, uh, I was in praying for some other videos who called me, and I was late in joining. But uh, it's, uh, uh, as much as what I understood uh, from the Pastor's message, I was very blessed and uh, really. God to use him and he is missed him mightily way. And uh, that's all. Thank you. I'm wondering if we can pray for, um, especially for the pastors from India and the Africa region. Is that possible? I wouldn't mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll have the time. Just I wanted to ask. Pastor Daniel, do you have any questions? Yeah, sure. In a minute, yeah. Yeah, we'll pray. Thank now. you. Thank yeah. you. Pastor Daniel. Yeah, he does. We usually do. <laughs> yeah, Pastor Daniel, I cannot hear. Uh, pastor, Pastor, I just hear um, the other pastor that was talking. He was coughing a bit. There is something. So we need to pray for him also in our Yeah, yeah. We'll prayer, pray. Right? Just I'm giving yes. some time. Yes. Some time. All right. Sisters, girls, do you want to speak something? Pastor Daniel? Okay, maybe his network is so Something? Okay. I think, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yes, I, I just have two words. Uh, I don't. I don't want to speak much because my colleagues have spoken. <laughs> uh, I'm blessed, and uh, we are blessed. I and my family, and we thank God for this uh, gathering. That is virtually, we are looking forward to having more meetings in, in the future. So bless everyone, uh, pastors. You have blessed me, Pastor Richard. God bless you, thank and you. God enrich you in all areas of your lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So for me, Pastor Richard, I really wanted to thank you so much for your precious time that you've given us. You know, I'm blessed. And our Indian pastors and all around the world pastors are blessed. You thank know, you. the yeah, very good, uh, very good friend all joined with us. You know, Amen. and we are having lots of meetings in a Zoom, but you know, we wanted to welcome you once again. Maybe, you know, let's see when we can be I will talk with you, Pastor. Okay, Richard. we'll do it. Thank yeah, you. And we we'll make when we can be. So thank you so much, all our Indian pastors. We'll be keep praying for each one and everyone. Yes. And let us to be, you know, bring the the body of Christ together, you know, to be strong in the word of God. This is the time to be with the Lord. 
in his word, you mm -hmm. know? Yes. So, yeah, so we have okay. great speakers, Pastor Brian, Leonard, Pastor Leonard, and there are many friends that join with us. So we were really wanted to say thank you for your precious time. Even Amen. the summer has very early morning, summer is night. You know, Sister Girl, <laughs> thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Thank you so much. You know, we have more friends joined from Canada as well. Pastor Paul, I love him so much. He's a good friend of me. So anyway, so let us pray for our pastor Richard as well and for our Indian pastors and whomever want to pray. Who said just to pray for everyone? Sister Emily would or something? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So please, can you pray for, you know, the situation of India? You know, mm -hmm. and uh, pass, uh, pray for Pastor Richard. Pastor Richard, do you have any prayer request? No, I'm just waiting on you. You you are you are the ones that, that you know that we're praying for, and we're speaking life over you because we know that you're going through so many hardships. But we know we know with flooding and different things going on over there and with the virus. So we're here to pray and minister to you. Okay, so let's pray you. for you there in India. Let's pray for you. Yeah, yeah, Sister Emily would can would you like to just pray for Pastor Lena? He was coffee. His health is sure. going on, so just pray for him also that God will heal him complete. Pastor Leonard is with us, you know. So Ooh, pray for okay. him. Yeah. Yes. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your healing touch, Lord. I thank you that your word of healing has gone forth from this group of more than two or three. I thank you, Lord, that your presence is with this pastor who has this health challenge and also with this other pastor traveled um, around and is now in Malaysia, all of these areas Sorry. being very difficult, hard ground. Lord, let your spirit go with them. Father, I pray that there will be Sorry. insight. There will be Mars Hill inroads, Lord, where where and wisdom as they evangelize, Lord, just doors of opportunity and give them the segue to present the gospel in creative ways. Father, I just pray that every interaction, every intersection between people for each of these ministers on these calls will just be a divine appointment. Father, let us not um, be slow to recognize your hand in, in every um, meeting that we have, every person that we meet. And Father, I thank you what Pastor Richard has shared with us that we look to what's in our hand, what you've given us, Lord, that that's our mantle of authority of special supernatural ability that you will use for kingdom authority and to bring others into your kingdom. Father, I thank you that we can encircle the principalities different principalities in each of our areas, but we encircle them with our words. And Father, I also thank you that you have magnified the anointing on our lives, just like Sorry. from Elijah to Elisha and um, from Moses to Joshua, as Pastor was yes, sharing. Lord, I thank you for these great truths from your word. I pray a special empowerment on the ministers here on this call who are experiencing great persecution and in Ghana and in different parts of Africa and India and Pakistan. And I know that resources are slim, but that we serve a God of supernatural provision. And Lord, I also pray for my close ministry friends that are in uh, Uganda that are experiencing great persecution that have a church and orphanage and a school. Lord, I just pray supernatural provision for them. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us offices and callings, and we have not yet even reached into the vastness and the richness and the abilities and the power that you've given us. And so, Father, make us bold, bold as lions for your kingdom. And Lord, I pray supernatural protection. I encircle with the fire of God each minister that is exposed to the witchcrafts and the evil wishes, desires, hexes, vexes, spells, implements, and so on from the enemy, from whatever geography we're in and how they work differently in each geography. Father, we don't need to know the depths of darkness and how it works. We just need to know our great almighty God 
who's more powerful, the name at which every knee shall bow, the name of Jesus. And we invoke the name of our precious Savior over any witchcrafts that are spoken against us, over any limitations that are spoken against us. And Father, I thank you that even right now, I feel your hand resting. I feel your hand resting on each one of us here. Thank you, Lord, for your greatness. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Father, we come before you. Yeah. God bless you. Have a blessed night. Blessed morning. Yes. Bless. Thank you. Breakfast. <laughs> okay, Pastor Richard. God bless you. Thank you for prayer. Thanks, uh, Pastor Richard. I look Thanks, forward, Pastor Richard. I look Thank you. Whenever we get... yeah. Thank, Thank you, you all Thank very you. much for the invite. I appreciate it. God bless to everyone. Awesome. Yes. Thank you very we much. We speak Thank such you. encouragement to you. May your ministries flourish and grow. And we speak that in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you.